Everybody, just love that lineup. Such great people have been a part of Faith with Katie. This is the broadcast today. I am Katie Souza, and welcome to the show, guys. Today we're going to have a special guest, Liz Wright, on to talk about the restoration of all things through Christ. He's the restorer of all things. So you're going to want to share the broadcast. If you are watching from Faith Television Network, we thank you for being on the broadcast today. We thank T the Faith TV Network for airing us live every Wednesday from East London, South Africa. But now if you're watching on your regular TV, get on your device, get on your phone, get on your iPad, go to My Faith TV on Facebook or go to Katie Souza on Facebook and sign in so you can share the broadcast because you know when you talk about Jesus, when you glorify Jesus, <clears throat> and when you talk about, especially how he's the restorer of all things, then things actually get restored. What do you need restored right now? Chat it in already at the beginning of this broadcast. Chat in where you're watching from. Chat in what you need to be restored. Because Jesus is going to release his authority, his anointing, his power, his goodness, and his love through the broadcast today as Liz and I are chatting. And you're going to see breakthrough is going to happen. Because when you glorify Christ, his very nature is released into every situation and opposition you're facing so that you can see things shift and move. Amen. So share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Amen. Chat in what you need to be restored. And while you're doing that, and before we bring Liz on, let's go to today's Selfie Miracle testimony video. Check it out. Hi, my name is Carolyn. I just wanted to come on here and tell you what God has done, not only for me, but for my mom. Um, my mom was diagnosed with colon cancer. Um, a mass showed in the CT scan and also a colonoscopy and a, um, a biopsy. And it came back colon cancer. CT scan also showed lymph node involvement. I am an oncology nurse and I knew what that meant. I knew that it meant um, probably the rest of her life with treatment. Um, I already knew with lymph node involvement, we were looking at stage three. Um, mom had her surgery. I flew back to New York, was with her. Um, she recovered so well. And um, I'm gonna back the story up. So coming over to see Katie um, and some of her friends here, we prayed for mom. We prayed for complete healing. Um, this was four days prior to her surgery. Um, I think we prayed over an hour. Um, God just came into our hearts and in our life and just filled us up with manifestation of miracles. Um, fast forward, surgery Monday. Mom was recovering well. She did not even need a colostomy bag doctor came in, he said, I took the mass out, I took up to 16 lymph nodes. Biopsy results come back next week and no lymph node involvement. The mass was taking out um, baseball size and no lymph node involvement, leaving my mom just stage two and hoping no treatment. She follows up next week with the oncologist. Um, so praise God, she's 72. Um, she's never gone to the doctors. She doesn't like the doctors. And we have the master physician at work. And I just want to give him all the praises. And thanks to Katie and her friends for helping lead prayer and manifesting these miracles. I'm telling you, the amount of cancer miracles we have seen lately has been astounding. You know, I might have told this story before, but it never gets old. We just had another woman who had a fist-sized tumor. With, it was rock hard. It had a crater, a moon crater in the middle of it. <clears throat> it was pouring forth like blood and goop, and it smelled really, really bad. And around the edge of the moon crater was these crusty, deep ridges inside the skin. And after I spent like some time on the phone with her and prayed for her, Within 24 hours, the tumor had shrunk 45%. Um, the skin had turned pink, and it started to pour out the toxin that was inside of it. That dried up in four days. The tumor dropped down even more percent. It keeps on shrinking and shrinking. <clears throat> the skin is so pink that it's regenerating from the center outward now, and the ridges are getting smaller. The tissue's getting softer. The smell has gone away. I mean... 
God is on the move. I pray for everyone right now who has cancer. Right now, I speak against that disease, and from the court of heaven, I judge that disease. I judge every demonic spirit behind it. I break that witchcraft curse that brought it upon you right now in the name of Jesus. I testify right now that Christ has already became a curse for you, for he was hung on a tree. Anyone who's hung on a tree is cursed. He took that curse of that cancer upon his body. I decree it over you right now. I judge those spirits and I cast them out. I speak to every trauma inside of you that's allowed a landing strip, every bit of witchcraft, any rebellion, any landing strip, and I feel it right now with the presence of the Holy Spirit and dunamis power right now. Be healed of trauma. Be healed of altars. Be covered with the blood of Jesus right now. Be restored right now. And I speak a generational, a, a, a regenerational miracle of skin tissue regenerating to replace the necros tissue as I judge that spirit of death that's on your breast and I speak to that tumor and I command it to dissolve in Jesus name right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah Look, I want you to chat in what's happened as, as I've been praying. I want you to also send me your testimonies, your selfie testimony videos. Okay, get your phone out. And if you ever had a miracle, get your phone out, put it in the landscape position like this, not like this. Do a two, three minute video for me and send it to selfies at katiesouza.com so I can air your testimony so people get healed. People get healed when they watch your testimony. Amen. Amen. And don't forget about Faith Now, guys. Faith Now is an amazing app. I don't know if we have the graphic, but if we do, let's sort it up on the board. Faith Now is 90, it's a dollar 99. You sign up for it and you get Katie TV with all my amazing guests, including Liz Wright, who's on the broadcast today. She has her show, Encountering God. We're going to play a promo about that in a minute. But she has an amazing show. It's going to take you into activations. It's on Katie TV, which is on Faith Now, guys. If you sign up for Faith Now for the monthly subscription, it's only $1.99. Come on, you can't even buy coffee for that. Hello, and you're going to get all the amazing programs on KDTV, all my shows. Then you got also Sid Roth, his network, Victory TV, and Newsmax. We now have Newsmax on Faith Now, Newsmax. So check that out, too. Just go to faithnow.net. That's faithnow.net, faithnow.net, and you will be able to sign up there for just $1.99 a month. Make sure you put in KDTV as the promo code. Then you're going to get a discount a free month and it shows the power it shows the powers to be that our people are supporting faith television network okay today's guest i love this woman she's got such a powerful anointing of the presence of jesus christ on her and wherever she goes people get breakthrough and miracles please welcome to today's broadcast liz wright The never aging woman <laughs> appears on the show. <laughs> hey, my friend. Hey, Katie. It's so good to be with you. <laughs> you know, you're a prime example of what happens when you hang out with Jesus. <laughs> you, it's you, true. You know, you're not the only restorer of all things, right? Restore. <laughs> Including youth. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Restore of youth, restore of all things. When when you preach this message, you're not kidding. You're you're like a walking road sign, billboard for Jesus is the restorer of all things. I, I love that message. You carry that because honestly, that's your focus. Your focus is Christ. Christ, Christ, yeah. Christ. Yeah. Completely, yeah. completely. It's all about him, isn't it? I mean, I just think he's bringing us back, you know, to the pure, undiluted gospel of grace, which is we are followers of Jesus. He paid the price on the cross for us to be able to live with him, his beautiful, powerful spirit now within us. And that's the scandal of the gospel, isn't it? God is now inside of us. And so, yeah, I just love him, as you know, as you do, as you do, Katie, just love him. And yeah, it's all about Jesus. Is that mystery of Christ in us is just, wow, it's almost incomprehensible. We could never dig to the bottom 
of all of the goodies that means yeah. and all of the blessings and all of everything that means of Christ in us and him being the restorer. Tell us some testimonies. Tell us some things that have happened as you've walked out this message of Christ in us. Okay. I mean, I I would love to actually what's been on my heart today is to is to share with you um, a more I mean, it was just astounding. It was life transforming the the way that I experienced Jesus as the one who is the restorer of all things. You know, like it says in a, in in Ephesians, the one who descended, ascended to bring about the restoration and fulfillment of all things, which is obviously now Jesus in his resurrected state at the right hand of the Father. That is his ministry, right? To bring yeah. about the restoration and fulfillment of all things. And so one um, astounding testimony from my life is a, it's very personal, actually, um, was to do with my mum. And it really, through it, Jesus showed me that there is nothing impossible for him, that he's outside of time, mm. that he absolutely wants to restore to us all forms of robbery, not just heal the trauma, which is profound in itself. And we're mm. so thankful for every physical healing and emotional healing and all that, you know, being healed from the trauma. But he wants to restore that which was stolen and lost as well in our lives. And so with mum, I mean, I, I long story cut very short, I grew up with you know with my mum struggling with mental illness and so she'd had lots of trauma in her life and it resulted in it was very severe clinical depression for a lot of my childhood and so the way that she wanted to love me she was deprived of to a to a you know the larger degree she was wonderful and she was kind and when she wasn't struggling with mental illness she was the most beautiful woman but then she would be very, very shut down. And so she was deprived of being able to be in fullness, the mum that she, mm. Jesus created her to be. And I was deprived of that. And my brother was deprived of, of that. And so, you know, without sharing all the story, people who've you know, gone through uh, these, you know, lived with people with mental illness understand it's very difficult. And so fast forwarding, mum had gone to heaven. She became a believer at the end of her life. Jesus mm. did a lot in her life, but she was never fully restored. And so I was speaking at a conference with it was we were hosting Jack Frost ministry doing you know healing the heart, healing the broken heart. And I was supposed to take the next session. And in the middle of the worship, Katie, the presence of God just enfolded me and saturated me. And I was taken into a vision and I was with Jesus and he took me in the vision it was nighttime. We were on a hill. I was. It was just one of those visions where it was just an immersive encounter with Jesus. I could feel him and see him and just was gone. You know, my conscious awareness was just completely focused on him. So it was nighttime. He took me up on a hill. We lay down just very quickly. He just, I, it's a long story, but cut short. I, I lay down into him and I could feel the comfort of his presence and the strength of who he is surrounding me. Mm. And his love began to pour into me, Katie. And he said to me, look up, what do you see? And I could see the stars. And so I said to him, just really childlike faith, I said to him, I can see the stars, Jesus. And he said to me, I made them for you. And as wow. he said it, I knew he was speaking to all of us. He made creation is for us you know it all displays the glory of who he is and he said i made them for you and as he said it this massive impartation of love just poured into my heart next thing he said to me again look up what do you see and i said i can see the man in the moon jesus meaning you know the mountains on the moon where you can see the face which was very special to me because mum used to tell me mountain you know man in the moon stories when i was a little girl and he again jesus just said to me i made and made him for you. And again, this massive impartation of love just poured into me. And then the next thing, which is the astounding part and just blew me away, Jesus brought my mum. So of course, she's in the cloud of witnesses. You know, we're surrounded by such a great, great cloud of witnesses. And he just brought her into this experience. And so again, she lay down and she began to hold me. And I began to feel, I was just absolutely filled with love with the love of Jesus, mm. the love of the love of, of my mom now in Christ. 
And she just said to me, "What? look up, what do you see? As I heard her in my spirit. And um, I said, I can see the man in the moon, mum. She said, that's right. And all of a sudden, Katie, I was absolutely, completely flooded with all the love that I should have received as a little girl, oh, pouring into me as Jesus, as the restorer of all things, who is outside of time, began to heal my heart and give back to wow. me as though so much love, as though I'd had hundreds of experiences with her that had been beautiful. And, you know, it was just all that deficit he restored what the enemy had stolen as he battered my mom in her life emotionally. So I came out of the experience and, and oh, it was just amazing. I came out of the experience, just crying my eyes out, absolutely overwhelmed with the love of Jesus. And Jesus spoke into my spirit and he said, I want you to share what's just happened. So at this conference in a complete mess, talking about something that was very, very personal to me, I began to share very simply, not very articulately, what had just happened and healing began to break out in the room. Oh, angels flooded in, Katie, hundreds of angels flooded in wow. and the, the healing began to move. I could feel the presence of the Holy Spirit in the room and there were about 250 people there approximately and literally one after the other came down to the front where the presence of God was pooling, was thick. Wow. And one after the other after the other, Jesus began to heal and restore to people where relationships had been broken, mm -hmm. mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters, and on and on it went. And people were just sovereignly being restored, being restored by the love of Jesus. As I just shared a simple but profound experience that I just had straight out of it, raw and real. But yes, yeah, so that was... From that experience, wow. I realized, you know, more than ever, he is the restorer of all things. He is bringing about the restoration and fulfillment of everything, including what we have lost, what's been stolen. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, that's one one radical testimony from my oh life. Oh, my gosh. It's changed beautiful. everything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, you know, when you hear that testimony, guys, you think there's no way, you know, you can have something you've lost from, you know, something that happened to a parent. They weren't there or they got sick like, you know, uh, Liz's mom or something's happened, a broken relationship. And you think I can never get that back, but it's never too late. And people will say, well, that cloud of witnesses thing, I don't believe in that. Well, that's Hebrews 12. It says, as for all of us, we have all these great witnesses who in circle us like clouds yeah. so we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into meaning we are surrounded by a cloud of great witnesses the people that go on to be with the lord the bible says the, that god is not the god of the dead but the god of the living those people are not dead your parents are not dead your family's not dead they are alive in christ in the heavenly realms and they encircle us as witnesses and so that's we must let go of every wound of all the pain that cloud of witnesses can help us get healed of the wounds of the things that we have been through that we've lost the relationships we've lost now i believe that there's even power presence that same pooling that was available at liz's meeting after she shared that story for you to be healed chat in who have you where have you been robbed of a relationship did your father, was he not there when you were growing up? Uh, where have you been robbed? Chat that in right now. Because I think as we continue ministering, uh, Liz, that, that something's going to happen for people mm. because they need restoration of loss of friends and family and relationships and things like that. And I think it's available. Can you just kind of minister? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree, Katie. I mean, I had no idea that Jesus wanted to not only heal, but completely restore until I had that experience. And yet, I mean, and Jesus in his sovereignty chose to bring, in his kindness and his sovereignty, chose to bring mom to me. And he's same Jesus, right? Same Holy Spirit that, that raised Jesus from the dead is inside each one of us right now and is wanting to dispense into every area where we have need, body, soul, and spirit, the healing flow of the oil of the presence of Jesus. And so I just agree right now with that truth 
the, the, and I call forth the Spirit of God in each person, wherever you have need, where you need restoring in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, and then also for the restoration of relationships. We, th I thank you, Jesus, every time I share the testimony of what happened to me, what you did. Who, Holy Spirit, woof, there's his Jesus. presence. Wow. 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 <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. He is yes. restoring relationships yes. right now, relationship breakdowns, where you've been stuck in offense. Yes. Who? Who? Where you've Ooh. been stuck in fear. Oh my gosh, Jesus is mm. dissolving it. He's dissolving the fear right now. He's flooding you afresh with his love and his peace. Mm. <sighs> Wow. What is he got doing wow. the impossible, right? The impossible. The impossible is happening right now. You think, well, I'm not even around that parent. Oh, their parent has already passed on. But look, he, he brought Liz's mom from the, from the great cloud of witnesses, from Hebrews 12, to restore full, yeah. full, full restoration. I decree the impossible is going to happen for you. Things that you thought, well, that will never happen. It couldn't. It's impossible. No, that, you know, nothing could ever bring that into fullness of wholeness. And I believe right now as we're ministering, Jesus is doing it for you, and he's going to align something, a dream, an encounter, a phone call, a letter. Uh, you're, you're, you're going to see in heaven, heaven's going to come and descend into your life. And we just decree it right now for you in the name of Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, you know, we um, agree. Wow, we agree. We agree. People need that so much. Liz, yeah. talk about some other, you know, what you've seen in the Word about Jesus being the restorer of all things and just some of the encounters some of the encounters you've had with the word on this oh my gosh I love as you know I just sit in the word and use it as a doorway to experience the heart of the one who authored it and just I'm I have such a hunger to know the truth the one who is the truth and to I I Jesus has been speaking to me a lot about the, the fact that we are in a time now where anything other than faith is going to seem illogical to those of us in the body of Christ. It's, it's a profound, we, I can feel it. He's aligning us on the inside so profoundly at the moment. He's bringing us forth as, uh, I, I believe, in, in a, an increased awareness of who we are as royalty in God mm. and and the the stature of Christ being formed inside of us it's like it's like everything within us that is not is that that's out of alignment with the truth of who we are in him and our, and uh resting on the inside in an increased capacity to trust the one who is our redeemer is our restorer is our prince mm. of peace is creator it's being it's being shifted. Now we are being shifted internally. So yeah, so literally over and over, Jesus has been showing me that anything that isn't faith is going to start to seem illogical to us. <laughs> Our discernment will be so absolute. We will be able to discern good from evil Ooh. in a moment. And also we are, we are coming forth as the embodiment of the different attributes of the faith of Jesus. Jesus unveiled inside of us, the one who is the restorer of everything, the one who is government, beginning to shine from us. So we'll embody faith. We won't choose faith. We will be faith. We won't ah. choose. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> so yeah, we will embody peace. We will embody love because it's who God is and it's who we are now in him. And so, yeah, I've been living with him, sitting with him in the word around this and just seeing, seeing who we all are more than I have. And yeah, Christianity, our, our new creation experience, kingdom reality becoming matter of fact in our life. It's just wow. it is the truth. It is the truth. We, It is the truth. He is the truth. He is the way. He is life. Healing is the children's bread. You know, there's an amazing scripture. I've got to read this, Zechariah 9.12. This is one of the scriptures I've been in recently. Return, this is God speaking, obviously, return to your fortress. Of course, Jesus is our strong tower. He's our mm. fortress. Mm. Rest return to your fortress, you, you prisoners of hope. So mm. us now in a 
our hearts being reset more firmly into an attitude of hope. And of course, biblically, as you know, hope means the certainty of. It's not wishful thinking of someday, one day. It's the certainty that that promise that God has given to you is going to manifest because he's faithfully watch over, watching over his word to perform it. So return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now, I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Come on. And so Ooh. everything that's been lost, holy. Ugh, I can feel it. I can feel the power of Holy Spirit right now. He's pushing Ooh. that into people again. Fresh capacity to believe him again, to have hope, to have surety that his promises are going to come forth and the things that you've lost in your life are going to be restored. We're, we're all going <laughs> to... <laughs> be people of faith, walking by faith, not by sight, realizing the promises in our lives and glorifying God because of yeah, his presence within us. <laughs> oh, there are a little bit of my my <laughs> things that I'm pondering at the moment. Come on. This is deep <laughs> revelation. And it 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 is flowing into what I feel is like a corporate um, impartation for the whole body that really it is true that anything other than faith will be illogical like when we see yeah. something it's impossible we'll know right away this is what God has called us to because impossible is is, is now normal it, it, and that's how we I, I believe God is releasing a grace to be able to actually believe that you know I a agree. corporate grace and you know like you know, God has just been highlighting Psalm 8 to me and how we've been given dominion over all the works of his hands. And it's like, I feel like God is saying you're no longer going to be uh, whimpering or crushed or victim or victimized. You're going to be conquerors, kings, priests, and you're going to mm -hmm. know who you are in Christ. It's it's a level, you know, it's an apostolic level that's coming upon the body for them to understand and really not just head knowledge of who they can be or what they can have in Christ, but they'll know it, they'll embody it, they'll walk it out, they'll, they'll execute it, they'll display it. And yeah. so I really feel like that what you're saying is truth and that more people are going to actually catch that wave of, yeah. of who they really are and then not be victimized anymore by the enemy. We, we've, been, we've been under his boot and he's in reality, he's under ours. That's it. Yeah, I, I, 100%, Katie. I can feel the shift. I mean, in, in my secret life in Jesus as a prophet, I'm, you know, as we do, I'm walking out an identificational impartation, really, that I'm receiving mm. what's coming. Like you said, it's going to be something that's going to be body wide. You know, it's a revelation to the body of Christ that's coming. Yeah. It's a transformation, actually, that's that we're going, we're, we're stepping into where we really are going to awaken to the truth, all of us, not just a few, I believe, but it's going to be all of us. We're going to awaken to the fact that we are the fact that we are mm. the head, not the tail, that mm. we are royalty, that we're going to be stepping into, I believe, more completely the partnership with Jesus. Jesus is getting his dream. You know, he's oh. the Holy Spirit is bringing about wow. Jesus dream right now, which is restored partnership. It's the original Edenic covenant, isn't it? It was Jesus brought forth a people he could have partnership with. He created mm. a people he could have partnership with and he's redeemed that. And he's he's awakening us to be able to co-reign with him in the earth and to be the ones. I think this is why he's showing us himself as the one who is the restorer of all things. Yeah. He's uh, comforting our hearts and strengthening our hearts in the truth and inviting us into that partnership so that everywhere we go, we drip Jesus, we drip Holy Spirit, we see, we, we're discerning with it, with fresh eyes, we're seeing what's evil, what's good, what needs to be restored. As a, And so his ministry, Jesus's ministry will continue through us. I believe at an mm. accelerated rate, he will flow his spirit through us. We are going to see everything that needs to be restored, put back, being filled with Jesus, being transformed. Mm. You know, he didn't create us to be sick, as you well know, Katie. You know, he, yeah. he 
if we look at Jesus in the Gospels, we see he went about continually restoring, redeeming yes, his yes. beloved creation, healing everybody, everybody, casting out any demon that wriggled anywhere, you know, rebuking death, <laughs> bringing people back to life because he is life. And I believe that's what's going to happen more and more as we just go into places, our presence as carriers of God and us tuned into that truth again. We're going to start to see life swallowing up death, you know, where death's had an impact on people's mm. life, where there's sickness and disease and and restoration is needed, you know. And so, yeah, yeah, I feel it. I can feel it. I feel a fresh power coming into us. You know, I think that uh, the forerunners like yourself, like me, like other people are going to break, are breaking the membrane and then the corporate flood will come in to hit the rest of the yeah. body. And you guys might think, I am so far from all of this. I feel so oppressed, downtrodden, I'm sick, everything's going sideways in my life. I, I, I don't feel anywhere close to what you guys are talking about. But I honestly, uh, Liz, I think there's a, a grace, a sovereign move of God that is coming upon the body where, you know, we're, we still are going to be are, are praying, fasting, worshiping and all that. Then God's just going to hit it for us. Do you feel that? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can I can feel this coming upon all of us and those situations, those, you know, impossibilities bow to the presence of the creator. Right. And so those those impossibilities that we face, if you know, for many of us, if we're still feeling like like you said, Katie, you know, overwhelmed, oppressed, you know, mm. far away from the description that I've just given of where we're moving to is the body of Christ, um, those those attitudes of heart, those areas where we're still emotionally feeling overwhelmed, those in relationship breakdowns and financial needs, those impossibilities are Jesus's opportunity to reveal himself as the one who restores everything. And he is and he wants to. And he, he, it's part of how he's, I believe, he's wooing us and drawing us nearer to himself and convincing our hearts of his faithfulness because he... Mm. He wants to be known by us, doesn't he? Like, I mean, yeah. you can really feel it right now. He wants to be known by us. I feel like um, everything is about the preparation now for the culmination of the ages, which is our eternal relationship with him. And we and we are we are being shown who Jesus is. He's taking us deeper and deeper into relationship mm. and revealing these different aspects of who he is to us. And then we can know him that way, lean into the strength of who he is and reveal him as he trusts us with all these different situations. And um, yeah, we're going to see him glorified. You know, guys, if, 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 if this language still seems foreign to you, you need to start watching Liz's broadcast called Encountering God. OK, it's being aired right now in multiple places, including on Katie TV. When you get your subscription to Faith Now, um, you can see Katie TV and Liz's broadcast is on there. And let me tell you, it's not a television show. It's an encounter. And that's why she called it Encountering God. Literally the entire broadcast is Liz just releasing these depth, depths of truth from scripture and from her own encounters with Jesus. And, and it's released through the airwaves into your home, into your heart. There's a penetration available on this broadcast. We're gonna watch the promo right now. And uh, you're going to see that you really need to get in the wave and the presence of what Liz is carrying because you're going to have an encounter. Uh, many times I'll just turn Liz's show on and I'll lay down and close my eyes and I get a breakthrough. I have a visitation. I get a revelation. There's an encounter in encountering God with Liz Wright. Let's check it out. Word of God into encountering him enabling you to experience him as your source. So as I'm sharing, just remember that every experience I've had is an invitation for you. And then I could see Jesus sitting you down on a hillside with him, gently restoring you back in the safety of his care into the experience of his love. We're going to experience what it's like to romance the heart of the King and to live from that place of contentment and exhilaration and authority. You just need to come to him 
You never need to clean yourself up. You never need to do this in your own strength. We can't anyway. We can only temporarily It's simply becoming consciously aware of our union again of the truth that Holy Spirit is inside of us and embracing him through our conscious awareness that we literally, you know, turning in, so to speak, like mm. not looking out there. Someday, one day, we're going to have an encounter and Jesus is going to walk up the garden path. And, you know, amen that he will. <laughs> you know, I live for those moments. But mm. but he has he's closer than our breath. And that's the truth, you know. And so he's just taught me over the years. And and as you know, you know, I share that in the show and I share it in what I teach. You know, just it's because it's so simple and that religion doesn't cut it, does it? You know, our lives we do have real problems. We, there are all sorts of issues facing us. And we, Jesus died for us to have an experiential walk with him. And that is the beautiful, powerful gospel. And he is available and his spirit is there all the time. And it's literally, you know, it, we get, we practice his presence this way and it just gets easier and easier. And before we know it, we're living an experiential, awakened, vibrant life where he becomes the strength of our life as we simply take moments in the day and tune back into him and and also like you know katie i i read the word as a doorway like i said you know i i'm using the scripture as language for conversation with jesus and so i i embrace the glorious christ within as my new life and live in union with him through my conscious awareness i tune in i i thank holy spirit and and i with expectation, I trust him to begin to, you know, communicate with me. But I do that often through the word, you know, I'll sit in like Psalm 23 or whichever is anybody's favorite scripture, you just start there, you know, Jesus. But I personalize it, you know, you are my shepherd, Jesus, I will not want, you know, you can literally sit there for weeks, you know, just, and, and I want to know him that way, you know, Jesus, show me what you want me to know about you that which is why you've had this particular scripture recorded for us. Who do you want me to know you to be? And because that's it is, it really is, isn't it? It's that the word of God is the doorway into experiencing the one who authored it and knowing his intention, his heart's intention and why he's written that for us in the Bible. And so, yeah, so that's how I walk. It's a very simple childlike walk, really. Just believing, mm. like he said to the disciples, you know, when they said to him, what's the will of the father? And he just said to simply believe in the one he's sent. Oof. So to, you know, even that's a grace, isn't it? Because Holy Spirit's inside of us enabling us to believe. And so, yeah, so I just, I turn in and I, I, I'm tuned back into the fact that he's there and he wants to be known by me. And so encounters his, he's not withholding his presence from us. He's made himself fully available to us all the time. We just get busy and distracted and um, and he's calling us back to his feet at the moment because he wants to be known by us. And mm. that's what life's about, isn't it? Our relationship with him now, being made ready for our forever relationship with him. It's true, guys. Uh, we are so busy and there's so much noise 
There's the noise of warfare. There's the noise of the family around us. There's the noise of daily needs and and of the daily, you know, stresses and traumas and crises that we go through. There's a lot of noise. But if we were to just practice the presence every day and turn in, when 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 we say that, when Liz says that, when I says that, when I say that, it's very simple. It's turning your focus away from the external noise inwardly to the one that lives in you. It's the mystery of the gospel, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He's with you 24 and 7. And we walk around forgetting that and causing and allowing ourselves to be caught up in everything externally when everything we need is within. And that's why that beautiful scripture in Ephesians says that we're transformed as we embrace the glorious Christ within and live in union with him. We, we have to foster our ability to be in union with Christ. And that's just a basic discipline of turning our gaze inwardly and shutting away the noise that's external and keeping that focus point, keeping the adoration, keeping the worship towards who we are walking around with 24 and 7, and that's Jesus. Can you kind of just lead people through a practical, just a practical couple of steps of being able to practice the presence of Christ? Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, um, I always encourage everybody. So, so right now, if you can, as long as you're not driving the car while you're listening or watching um if you can right now just become fully center centered into this moment fully present so just park your life pressures and the busyness of what's going on in the circumstance of your life just at the door of this moment don't think about the future don't think about the past and just let go of all of it put all of your life the weight of your life into the hands of Jesus, to see yourself doing that right now. And turn your attention inwards. Just begin to embrace him. Embrace him with your heart's attention and turn inwards and see Jesus. He is in the center of your spirit. He is within you. He is closer than your breath. And all you have to do is become consciously aware to begin to live the same life relationship with Jesus that he had with the Father. So just, as the scripture tells us, so just turn in. Thank you. And I'll, I'll just begin to speak to Jesus. I'll give us language and just help you go deeper now. And as you do this, just let go of all the weight. If, they, if your mind starts to pull you out of this moment, just, it's okay. Just let it go. Don't say breath. You are within me by your spirit right now. I lean into you, Jesus. I thank you for the, the power, the magnetic pull of your heart pulling me closer into you, awakening me, tuning my, me back in to the truth of your presence within me, that I am filled with God and filled with you, Jesus. Thank you that as I release my burdens and cares to you, you are faithful, you care for me. I cast my burdens on you, all the weight and the responsibility of my life right now, the impossibilities and the pressures, the sickness and the lack. Holy, holy, the tormenting thoughts, the unbelief, the fears, I just release them all to you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy, poof, this presence just enfolding you and pulling you deeper. He wants, I just felt that revelation coming from his heart to mine and for you. He wants you to know him also as the Prince of Peace. Mm. Holy, thank you. holy. Jesus. Holy, the Prince of Peace, flooding your heart afresh Jesus. with peace, bringing you into rest. Mm -hmm. Peace Thank you, Lord. is a powerful word. The Prince of Shalom, the Prince of Peace who crushes Satan under your feet. 
The word shalom, when you look at it in the pictorial language of the Hebrew, it means destroying the yoke that attaches to chaos. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Jesus. Holy. Thank you, Lord. That's what he's doing for you now. He wants mm. you to experience freedom today, freedom from your enemy. He is destroying the yoke that attaches your life to chaos, where the enemy has put upon you chaos, oppression, despair, oh, you, hopelessness. He's, the thank Lord you. is removing it thank you, by helping you to experience afresh right now in this moment. So just keep sinking deeper into him, letting go into the arms of his presence. Let your heart sink flop back into him holy holy jesus. thank you jesus thank you jesus and i can see him as well as he's doing this he's freshly igniting the flame of love deep inside your heart mm. for jesus holy thank you lord oh. thank you lord thank you lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm. One who is faithful and true. Thank you, who is your fortress, who is your strong tower, is here. Wow. 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 Yes, your defender and deliverer. Jesus. Your prince of peace. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Yeah, wow. this you know, powerful breathe warfare breathe. is rest Thank you, Lord. <laughs> that comes from the presence of God. Right now I can feel that. It's just mm. in, in finishing there. I can feel mm. the victory, the and victory Prince, that Jesus you know, God, is establishing. Yes, Thank you, the, Jesus. The God of peace crushes Satan under his feet. Sometimes, guys, you need to just be still and you need to turn within and you need to do just what Liz was leading you to do, let go of every worry. What does worry add one day to your life? No, it doesn't. Let go of every fear. The Bible is full of God saying, do not fear, do not fear, for I am with you. He is with you, he's inside of you. And the more you commune with the one who is living and present in you, 24 and 7, the more his power, his presence, his love, his goodness is manifested in every place you need it. I invite you to even go back. Go back and watch this part of this broadcast and just activate into that internal rest of Christ in you. And do it over and over again and you'll start to see encounter encounter happen as you let go of everything that you think is so important and that's controlling your life and go to the root source of the river of living water and the vine that feeds you and nourishes you and gives you life. Go to him. He's the restorer of all things. He's the second Adam who has come to restore everything the first Adam lost. Amen. Amen. Liz, you know, I've got mm -hmm. to talk about your book, not to try to sell anything because we're in a place of encounter right now. And people yeah. want to know, how can I get into that <clears throat> regularly? Your book, Loved, is a devotional that leads people into rest. It leads them into that place of visitation. I love this book, and it's called Loved because we are just just basically tell people what they're going to experience as they walk through this daily devotions to unite with Christ. <clears throat> yeah, people are going to experience the person of Jesus, experience his love, experience healing, experience truth. It's an activational devotional, mm, really. Yeah. I wrote it in a way that it was a flow from of revelation from Jesus heart and it includes it just take it includes keys from scripture and and just it it it's like me holding your hand 
I've got one hand, Jesus got the other, mm -hmm. and just taking people literally with language into experiencing Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it, I wrote it obviously in a flow with Jesus, but it was really to help because that's one of the things that I get asked all the time is how do you go deeper? How do you have encounters mm -hmm. with Jesus? How you know, and so that's that's why we wrote loved so that people it helps it's a, it helps people to to break through or go deeper. And it's just, yeah, the, we've had so many testimonies from that book. I mean, just all over the world. It's, yeah. Cause Thank you, I'm Jesus. Sure, yeah, I'm sure that many of you have asked those questions. <clears throat> How do I go deeper? How do I encounter Jesus? How do I understand him more? How do I get the deep, intimate knowledge of him? Okay, this is going to help you. Go to Amazon.com. Get it. It's called Loved. And it's by Liz Wright. Liz, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I just mentioned about Jesus being the... Um, the second Adam, I feel like we're entering in to a season, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm even prophesying right now, of uh, like a blue moon event. A blue moon event is a rare occurrence. I feel like there's a sovereign move coming in August, September of this year where actual liquid love, liquid life, rivers of living water are going to quicken the body of Christ physically mentally, emotionally, and physically, <clears throat> because Jesus wants to show he truly is the second Adam, restoring what we lost in the garden, which part of that was our immortality, our, our health. We started to physically die at that moment in the garden when, you know, sin came in, when the serpent deceived us. And I feel like the second Adam, his anointing and the re restoration of his presence is happening this year. Do you, do you feel that it's corporate? Yeah, I absolutely do, Katie. I absolutely do. I believe we are absolutely in the time. And I could, when you were speaking then, I could feel it. I could feel his presence. Mm -hmm. We are in the time. I absolutely have faith for it, that we're going to start to see people in our generation not dying, you know, as radical as that, where degeneration and sickness begin to become a thing of the past, because there's so much of the glory of God pulsating through our physical bodies and mm. he healing and transforming and restoring and reversing aging. And I mean, there's medical breakthroughs, aren't there? And there's dramatic oh, medical yeah. breakthroughs and in the field of quantum physics and all by quantum biology and biology. And there's just so stem cell research that's just in the natural but yeah i believe it in the spirit that we are yeah we're, we are being restored body soul and spirit we're being brought back into the original blueprint for who we actually are mm. and the spirit that yeah the spirit of jesus is regenerating us i mean definitely i know both of you and i have had these conversations we're not aging in at the same Right. It's we yeah. just don't believe in aging anymore. I just don't. You know, I don't. I have so much faith for it. <laughs> I know. It's beautiful. And I, I feel like the Lord is, has told me that something is coming. I'm gonna start building a teaching around it. I would love to have you involved because you yeah. even physically have <clears throat> not been sick for how many years now? Sixteen, yeah. eighteen yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The only time was um, when I was cursed by witches, and then once we realised they were curses, and we broke the curses, all the manifestations left. There was yeah. So no, I don't get sick. I've not had COVID. I've not had you know, any of this stuff. I've just, I've prayed for lots and lots of people, and it's a grace. I'm just, I'm very very thankful. You know, and I steward my body, but like you do, you know. But yeah, I, I can feel it. There's. I think we're mm. we're touching into it. We're forerunning in it to a degree, but there's a lot more. As the uh, and I, you know, I just I think as well like the logic in from scriptures, you know, that it says that the that um, death is a consequence of sin, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so if we the more we're aligning now into the truth of who we are as a new creation, then and we are operating out of in, our new nature in Christ. There's no sin in Christ. So the more we're aligned. I believe we're going to start to see degeneration of mm. our physical bodies leave because death is the consequence of sin. Well, if we're not operating in sin, there's no death. So I believe that's part of where we're going to. That's what a scriptural precedent for it. That's where we're going to. And death's the final enemy, obviously, that we're going to overcome in whichever generation Jesus 
really breathes that truth into us and we start to experience that and I I you know I have faith for it Katie absolutely I can feel it something massive is about to happen yeah that's so true I do too <laughs> I'm you know and you know that scripture is so beautiful the wages of sin is death but God's lavish gift is life eternal found in yeah. your union with Christ so guys as yeah. we start continuing to practice the presence by turning within to where Christ is within us Ephesians 4 again says that we're transformed when we, when we embrace the presence of Christ in us and live in union with him, as you start to practice the simple thing of turning your focus away from the world, turning towards him, the life-giving vine will be activated and you will experience life eternal. Do you realize you're already eternal? <laughs> you're already eternal. Why can't it, God has planted eternity in our hearts? Why can't that eternal presence and power flow out of our hearts into our physical bodies? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit quickens our mortal bodies and that we've already gone down in death with Christ and up to resurrection to new life in Christ. So I'm, I'm receiving the new life, my friend, the new life. And I believe it too, that I believe that degeneration and disease will become a thing of the past. And God is going to breathe on it even this year, guys. You know, I would like you guys to join us for Liz's event coming up called Encounter 2023, March 23rd to the 25th at Yuba City, California. Brian Simmons is going to be there. Richard Gordon, Liz is hosting, and I'm going to be there speaking, and we're going to go deep. We're going to talk about things that are... that our breakthrough revelations that are sound breakthrough to the world, but they are the norm to Jesus because they're who he is. I want to play a, a, a promo about that event. I want you to go and register because I want to see you there. I want to hug your neck and see you there. So let's check out this event right now. This most precious one, inviting you into a divine dance of transformational love. Okay. Thank you, Liz, for joining us. We're out of time, you guys. Make sure that you sign up so I see you at the event, and I will see you guys next week.